Thank you, Christian. Grab a mic, right? Yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thanks, Christian, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Ashish Sharma, and today I'm actually talking about uh, Zero Trust and Verify, the Zeek edition. Uh, for a change, this is actually like first time I'm actually giving a talk which is not quite technical per se, and it's more of like a overview and like even a glimpse into like my or our understanding of like Zeek, Zero Trust, security and stuff. So I come from Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. I have been working there for since 2010. Uh, this year, the, so the name to the fame, like we, we like a little bragging, especially when it comes down to Nobel Prizes. This year, we lab, like two scientists from the lab actually won no, two, two Nobel Prizes, physics and chemistry, so to bring the count 16. So the tradition is generally whenever somebody new wins a Nobel Prize, somebody will go and print a picture before all the, uh, and then paste it here. So I couldn't get the new picture, so I just pasted my own screenshots here to update, but it is an updated slide. So uh, another thing with the Berkeley Lab is, and this is what made me actually go join the lab, is it comes from a very rich background in cybersecurity and networking. So tools like uh, Traceroute, LippyCap, TCP Dump actually were built at the lab. I, I still work with Craig Laris, who is the original author of TCP Dump. Uh, one of the original authors, Cuckoo's Egg, Egg is there. And of course, it's a birthplace for Zeek as well. So, so that brings like a, a little bit of proud feeling too. So about this talk, actually, uh, I'm talking about what is zero trust, at least my or our version of zero trust. And then uh, once we heard this, tried to understand zero trust, it's like, oh, maybe we were doing zero trust uh, before it became a buzzword. Uh, but maybe not. There is a lot of different definitions, interpretations, arguments, discussions ongoing so far. So, but here what I'm going to be talking about is like looking at the fundamental design goals of Zeek, so that, which is like preaching the choir here. But then what's the lab security philosophy and like how did it organically grow along with Zeek and Zeek with the, that? And then how does both of them end up actually uh, being relevant or applicable with zero trust? So and then uh, I get into a little more details about like various tenets of zero trust and then like the challenges I think comes up with it as we progress further, especially from Zeke's point of view or network monitoring point of view. So let's see how this one goes. So there are a lot of definitions of zero trust. What exactly is zero trust? Uh, even I don't quite can confidently tell you, but uh, the definition we picked up is from the Air Force Zero Trust architecture. The definition literally says that Zero Trust is a data application access strategy that assumes all resource requests originate from untrusted source. So everything cannot be trusted. And uh, devices, applications, everything needs to be authenticated, explicitly authorized, using least privileges, multiple attributes, and dynamic cybersecurity policies. So it's pretty loaded definition, actually, like each one of them brings a very heavy uh, responsibilities if you are thinking about implementing something like this. But somehow this definition resonated with us quite a bit, so we kind of try to stick to this one. So now let's get it to Zeek part. So like from the very beginning, so like the original Zeek paper, uh, the version from 99 actually used Nix, uh, had designed goals and the requirements for Zeek. And like one of the goal is it should be high speed, uh, large volume monitoring, no packet drops, real time uh, alerting. But so these are the usual uh, goals. And if you read the paper, you will get more in glimpse into it. But then there is certain other, like four other which, uh, uh, design goals, which was like extensible, avoid simple mistakes, mechanism separate from policy, uh, one of our favorites actually, and monitor will be attacked. So like these were the design goals of Zeek originally. So let's get into like what does it even mean? Like so the extensible, which actually literally meant is uh, the system must be designed in order to make it easy to add it, uh, it to it the knowledge of new attacks. And remember, like uh, today morning when Microsoft gave their really good talk, this was one of the things they even pointed out too. So it's not that after that talk I added this slide, but I did modify this thing to actually literally focus on it, made it red. 
But yeah, the system should be able to adapt to the new attacks. It should be designed. And kind of like, does it relate to zero trust in some ways? Maybe, like, like we can think about that. Avoid simple mistakes where it's like, you know, the site defines its security policy that should be clear and error free. So like each site has their own ways of doing things. I talk with different uh, universities, different labs. Everybody has their own ways of doing things. Can this work in list? And then there are different philosophies through management. Then mechanisms separate from policy. And actually, the example for that is like, you know, Zeek is a network flight recorder. It records everything. It doesn't tell you what's good, what's bad. It just records. So like, you know, uh, don't tell me that this is the bad thing. Give me everything. Let me figure out more heuristics out of this. And then one of the other design goals, the last one is self-evidently monitor will be attacked. So that is like, you know, you can't really trust even the traffic you are monitoring, especially when you're actually into this. So this is just from the uh, Z, uh, paper, original paper. But the big picture here actually is that uh, Zeek is a network monitoring tool, a continuous network monitoring tool. So the, the thing, the thought I had when I was actually looking more into the zero trust part of it was that the design goals when Vern originally wrote this paper was not keeping zero trust in mind, but more uh, that it, these thing goals actually were still relevant, like when written in 99 are still relevant in 2022. And when you more think of it from the understanding of like, oh, all requests originate from untrusted sources, everybody should be authenticated, data should be uh, vetted with various different attributes, roles, and uh, mechanisms. So like, you know, it kind of like starts resonating a little bit more. So now let's get back to a little bit inside into our Berkeley Lab security posture. This is from 1993, so it predates me by many, many, actually uh, many decades, I would say. But uh, the design principle is enable science. So the lab decides to keep their network open by default. Like anybody should be able to come, plug their machine. We will not dictate what device you can run, what you should do, what uh, particular, you want to use your phone, you want to use your tablet, you want to use your computer, computers, supercomputers, everything is okay. And then the principle was like, it's risk-based security philosophy. And then we should rely on data. And part of it is research too, like put efforts into the research in security attacks, what's going on, and then learn from that and then implement those things. Active response, my favorite one of them. So, uh, so this was basically the design principles. Now, how does this actually convert into implementations? So one of the things which we figured out is like, you know, we should have pervasive visibility. Like every, we should be able to see everything. If you keep things open, you should have a good view of everything going in and out of network or everything going inside the network too. You should be your own attacker, like have good scan. Uh, scanning engines, good scan systems, and all those. And then, uh, you know, let me just translate this into simple, the resist temptation to centrally secure, avoid active directory. So, and then there is like, you know, compromises are truth of the situation. They will always happen. So instead of like saying, oh, we will design the network, lock it down to have zero incidents, it's like, no, we should have acceptable incidents and we should detect them, uh, respond to them, figure out the timeline, how it happened, when it happened, what all it did it do, and then uh, learn from it and keep moving on. So, so, so this was the design strategy. Now comes the zero trust, different papers and architectures, and you know, these are the tenants of zero trust, and I picked it up from the Air Force uh, zero trust uh, reference architecture, and it says that you know, you should assume a hostile environment. Uh, you, uh, then you should always presume a breach, and that is one of the philosophies we also had, and I think we as a security engineer always have this, where it's like, you know what? There's always a compromise machine in your network. The question is, how do you find it? When do you find it? And that's the question you keep running in your head. So you presume a beat. Then you scrutinize explicitly, like, what's going on? Is this right? Whoa, this is weird. Let me dig more. And then uh, one of the things is, like, enterprise collects as much information as possible about the current state. So, you know, how does this all tie together? Like, uh, the design principles, strategies, tenants of zero trust when you're re reading this document like six months ago. 
uh, it all kind of ties together with Zeek in certain ways. And what I did here is I kind of bold uh, the things which I think actually try, uh, ties uh, because of Zeek. One of them is like, you know, data and research based design principles. So how do you get data? Zeek generates you the data. And it's unbiased data. It doesn't like say, oh, these are bad domains, so I will only log those. What we'll do is log everything up. So that helps you make more decisions. Active response and like continuous monitoring, needless to say anything here. Uh, likewise, when you get into design strategies, we are talking about like pervasive visibility. We are talking about uh, incidents or realities of life. They will happen, but you know, Zeek allows you to look at that, do the forensic, do the incident response, do all kinds of things. And then, Everything in the zero trust tenants is actually pretty much relevant to like, you know, uh, uh, continuous monitoring, this thing. So, so this is how I think Zeek should be able to tie it. And then this is one little example of how we would do pervasive visibility. Like how do you watch everything in the network? This is actually a diagram uh, of our internal uh, monitor. So this is not the border network. This is not north, south, east, west, but this is more some uh, the inside subnet view. But what we have done is we actually tried to get taps uh, across as many subnets, networks, buildings we can. And actually, uh, the, the thing is we want more. I mean, if we can see everything inside the network, the better it is. So this, this kind of gets you an illustration. We, of course, had to solve very interesting problems of data deduplication and all. And, uh, my colleague Michael is also here. He actually did, like, uh, he can talk about all kinds of filtering he ended up doing to make sure that this is accurately tabbed as well as all the deduplications. But, but we do have a solid visibility. This itself can be a talk, actually, sometime. So, but, uh, like, pervasive visibility is just not enough. Like, can we, can Zeek become a tool for implementation of zero trust and or uh, like enforcement of zero trust, like how does it actually work out in there? So you know, like uh, the general philosophy is like know your network. Zeek is very good at that. And then uh, you can actually get a brief visibility at least in modern times, like uh, who, when, where, how, data, uh, like uh, when you look at the zero trust different things, the so zero trust talks about five pillars. One of them is the data. So like. Can we, can Zeek look into the data? I think about it from like, yeah, there is some work into like file analysis framework, then there's some SMB analyzers can tell you like what's going on inside the network. Applications of software.log comes uh, at the top of the mind. Computational resources, I don't know, like uh, currently we can actually dig deeper into that aspect of it, but like, you know, Microsoft got Zeek running on these boxes, we can actually probably get more insights that way. Users, there's authentication framework, or at least some groundwork of it. So, but, and then the other aspect of it is like, you know, the quality of information, yeah. Uh, most of the time we can feel pretty confident about the things we are recording, we are seeing. So, this is there. And so this diagram actually is from uh, the Department of Defense Zero Trust Reference Architecture, and it's pretty loaded diagram. Like, when you read these uh, uh, reference architectures, uh, I have a hard time even understanding certain term terminologies. So like for example, uh, I mean in this one, I, I, I really don't know like what's risk adaptive application access, like, uh, like what exactly is going. So they, they talk in detail about all these aspects. But uh, so I went through this diagram, I'm like okay, how does it actually add up like with our security philosophy, with Zeek being the core cornerstone of the security at the lab. Uh, and if we are into implementing zero trust, like how would this work out? So there's stuff like, uh, I would say like pay attention to like this, there is this software defined parameter. So uh, I, I thought I'll pick up on this one. Uh, I just couldn't figure out like how securing software supply chain, I can do anything with zero trust, Zeek, Berkeley Lab. Like you really don't have I have no clue on this part. But then this side of the diagram, it actually is like, oh yeah, things resonate to me. They make little more sense. And this is how they make some sense. So I actually picked like three, one, three, one, two, and three. And like for one of them is like encryption. So encryption is like encryption in transit and encryption at rest. So you know, Zeke cannot quite see things which are encrypted. 
But maybe what we can do is that we can use Zeek for like, you know, what kind of cipher was used? Is it a weak cipher, a strong cipher, SSL version 0, 2, 3, 4? Like, what, where are we going? So we can probably do certain insights that way. At least we are like scratching the surface at least. Uh, and other one is, you know what? Sometimes absence of a signal is a signal too, where it's like, you know what zero trust says that, you know, uh, Everything is untrusted, everything should be encrypted, everything should be uh, highly vetted. Now you should, like, can we actually create these policies which actually make sure that there is enforcement and or reversal of it? Like, oh, why, why, why do I see a clear text connection going here? So something on those lines. Then there is like data discovery and classification. So like, uh, this, this is tempting, like, can we actually really look at the data and start tagging it in the network, like, you know, what kind of data is going. Of course, now you have a fight with encryption going on and uh, other aspects, but maybe we can think of uh, other higher profile things, like, you know what, I know these are HPC servers, I know that these are backup servers. Maybe we can start tagging it in certain manner. I, I speculate. So, uh, and then there's data. So let me just got, get into the data loss prevention. So, you know, one of the thing, uh, at the lab is we are completely unclassified science lab, uh, a lab of Office of Science in Department of Energy. But we were still concerned a little bit about like, you know, do you have uh, official use only emails going through the network? And like, how do you we even know like who are the recipients or top consumers of that or CUI or like other kind of classified emails with certain level of classification, even most of them are generally open. So, and then Zeek actually, like, uh, uh, DoD has another guidance on, like, saying that, you know, if you want to tag the data, you have to make it, like, mark it as, like, visible, accessible, understandable link. Like, how does this even make sense overall? But, uh, you know, the DLP part here is actually, like, even though all the SSL is over TLS, sorry, all the emails are over TLS and it's all encrypted, there are certain other workarounds, and this was the example actually I was trying to use, like how does uh, we make things still relevant. So the NIST Zero Trust Guideline says that, that you know all communication is secured regardless of network location. And at the same time, uh, uh, it also says like the enterprise collects as much information possible about the current states of ass assets. So like you're talking about encryption, like Zero Trust talks about encryption at the same time it says collect as much as. What, what is the way to do it? So in this case, what we ended up doing was that our main uh, provider, quote unquote, is Google. So we ended up actually having Google do a dual delivery to us. So all the email, uh, email actually, the is uh, on TLS, it's all encrypted, everything, we can't have visibility, but then Google sends us another copy, which actually gets received by a, a cluster of machines actually, they get this, they actually face TLS, once the uh, mail is received on the machine here in this case, the SMTP relay, it actually goes clear text, and then we push that clear text email to another system, called, and we call that SMTP sync. And this clear text actually is read by Zeek. And then we would implement these policies and start saying, oh, we have now more visibility into emails, and this is. So the point here actually is that, you know, while TLS is a uh, welcome thing, encryption is a good thing, this was a workaround to be put in place. Uh, so, so this was just one example out here, uh, but, uh, again, like, you know, some of the things with zero trust is like, you know, attribute based access control. We don't know, like, I don't know what really that means and how can I actually even work with it. But then uh, behavioral based kind of resonates better. Like, you know what, can we do certain anomaly detection based on behavior, encrypted or not? Uh, maybe more signal analysis, more uh, like where they are logging from, what they are doing, something on those. So, so there is stuff for that, uh, maybe, profile users, then there is this device hygiene, it's another zero trust recommendation, and it's like, can we do continuous automated inventory and telemetry? Like, okay, uh, how does that even work out? So we know that there is known host and known services. Does that actually mean that we have a good inventory or can we improve upon that and then get a better inventory out of it? 
So, and then similarly, like dynamic device service updates, like, okay, can we do like something like host profiling, institution services? So these are certain aspects to it. Then Zero Trust also talks about like visibility and uh, analytics, automation, orchestration. So yeah, uh, I did show a few slides ago that there is visibility. We, we already talked about that. But then uh, there is proactive responses. So uh, uh, we do a lot of automated defenses. Zeke would see something bad, they will block us. But, so if there's dynamic firewalling in place, then we can do real-time whitelisting and stuff. But uh, <clears throat> How, how far can we go with anomaly detections, especially when it starts considering uh, aspects of zero trust? So like, you know, zero trust has these pillars. So one of them is identity management, another one is device, like do you, uh, you should be able to have a lot of control on your device, device uh, needs to authenticate, then users need to authenticate and so on and so forth. Then there's data pillar, network pillar applications. So. But then, like, do we have visibility into like enforcing attribute-based authentications? Like, I don't know how that would work out too. So these are like kind of challenges with the current atmosphere and like where we rely on uh, our security philosophy with a combination of current state of security and then this the whole new world of zero trust coming in. And then zero trust also says that you know there is no defined parameter anymore. Host like can be in clouds, can be at home, can be like somewhere else. So, and one of the example is like you know when your network is not even your network. So they have like a software defined parameter, and this is actually in uh, implementation at the lab where we have lot of our not lot almost all of our web servers, or at least we are on track of it. Uh, which are front faced by Cloudflare. So now if somebody is, wants to connect to some web server at Berkeley Lab, they end up actually connecting to Cloudflare. If it's in Cloudflare's cache, Cloudflare serves them. Otherwise, the connection we see is only Cloudflare IP com coming to the web server and sending the data back. So the network, like our network is not network anymore. Like it's shielded, hijacked, take pick your choice by Cloudflare in certain ways. So how do you do that kind of monitoring? But so there are like tricks we have put in place like fetch Cloudflare logs, look into that. The good aspect of that is now, instead of HTTPS, we actually see all the get requests and post requests pretty clear. Uh, so, 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 but yeah, like a software defined parameter is actually one of the big things coming up with the zero trust too. So like how does that actually work? So now this is where the, uh, uh, like all these uh, things I built upon is actually here. Like, you know, how do we adopt to it? Like when endpoints are not in network in traditional sense, and we have seen that with COVID era, like when entire workforce was home, now you're securing, like asking them to connect on VPN, but Zero Trust says that VPN should be eliminated. Like, you know, the device trust, it gets trusted, users get trusted, you don't really rely on. So how does that work? And then there are the new things coming up, our new dictates coming up actually, which is like DNS over TLS, DNS over HTTPS, like how does that actually, like how do you get, so imagine not having access to DNS.log. Uh, that would become a little, uh, I don't want to say funny, but scary, right? <laughs> So, so uh, it's, it's one of those things. And, uh, but maybe like the way we actually were able to do something about SMTP, where there is a dual delivery, there's something, maybe who knows, Bind actually comes up with a mechanism for us to still implement DOT or uh, DOH and still be able to do certain kinds of monitoring. And then uh, like uh, with uh, this, this is an interesting point too, like the current monitoring won't detect compromised system until it connects to, connects to our network. And uh, it's kind of like a bragging right in certain ways at the lab to like some visitor comes in and we tell them, you know what, your machine is owned. And they're like, huh. But, but the deal is, it used to be fun, like you know, somebody comes to your network. But now the problem is, somebody, a guest is not coming to your network. Your own users are not connecting to your network. Now how do you detect they got owned? And if they got owned, the odds are lab can get owned too. So, so these are certain like uh, uh, new challenges we actually have started thinking about, like with the relevance of how it would work out in the current world. So, so this is pretty much uh, my talk actually. And if there are questions, uh, I'm happy to see if I can answer them or at least have some kind of thought or discussion about it. Yeah. 
Thank you, Ashish. Sure. All right, questions for Ashish. Well, I just heard from someone in the back that Ashish is one of the coolest people ever, so. <laughs> if, if that's the question, good question. <laughs> Uh, thanks, that was very good. Um, I just wanted to make the comment that perhaps uh, one thing to consider is that in this special pub 800-207, they have the architecture slide in figure two um, in that document, and it talks about the control plane and the data plane um, and where Zeek fits, right? You've got continuous diagnostics and monitoring. You've got threat intelligence, right? So there's places in that space might be helpful to illustrate where Zeek fits in that overall architecture concept. So just passing that back as part of the discussion. Mm -hmm. I see. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much, actually. Uh, uh, thanks for it. Uh, and think about this, uh, like uh, how, uh, like if you, you look at this talk, like how would you think about like zero trust or like the new paradigm or the buzzword or like how does it affect your network? I think that's the whole point of this talk here. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you, Ashish.